In this video, we are going to take a quantitative look at Young's double slit experiment. So last time versus this time. Last time, we saw that when light is passed through two slits, the outgoing light waves constructively and destructively interfere. And then when that light is observed on a screen, we see the resulting interference pattern. It says alternating bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. This time, our goal is to determine what quantitative variables affect where on the bright screen we will see those bright spots and dark spots. What determines the spacing of the bright and dark spots? Let's get started. Quick recap of the experiment. Uh, figure A here is a schematic of the experiment. Um, we have incoming parallel light rays that hit two slits. Those two slits allow the light waves to diffract and bend around the barrier. And the result of that bending around the barrier can be seen in figure B, where we have these two circular light waves that come out. And the circular light waves add in such a way that when you hit the screen, sometimes you see bright and sometimes you see dark. So picture C here is showing uh, the physical picture. So that's the experiment. So we've got a schematic, wave fronts, and interference pattern. Our goal now is to determine where on the screen will bright spots appear and where on the screen will dark spots appear. So here is our experiment. We have our barrier with two slits labeled S1 and S2. And the distance from S1 to an arbitrary point on the screen is called L1. And the distance from S2 to an, that same arbitrary point is called L2. Let theta be the angle from the point between the two slits to our arbitrary point on the screen. So this angle here is theta. And we're going to imagine ourselves scanning theta from point P all the way up the screen, and then all the way back down. So the big idea, where are the bright spots and where are the dark spots? Constructive interference, our conditions for that are when the difference in the path length between two waves is a whole integer multiple of the wavelength, then you have constructive interference. And then you have destructive interference when you shift one of the waves, half a wavelength, uh, compared to where there is constructive interference. So what is the path difference delta L for this setup? That's going to be our motivation. The distance between the two slits, let's label it as lowercase d. And then here is the path difference. It's this, if we drop a perpendicular down from slit 1 to the path of wave 2, this amount here is the difference in the paths, path lengths between L1 and L2. And we are going to pretend that the screen is very, very far away. Um, for all practical purposes, it is infinitely far away. And so what that means is that we are going to pretend that our light waves leave parallel to each other, when in reality they are actually going to intersect somewhere. Uh, and this allows the angle theta that we defined earlier to also be approximately equal to this angle theta in our picture, um, which is related to the path length. So theta L here is our definition for the angle theta and some geometry um, far screen approximation allows us to say that this is also theta. And so our path difference here is L2 minus L1. And we can see from the geometry of this triangle that's set up on the right that this uh, path difference is also d times the sine of theta, right? The path length here is opposite the angle theta. This is a right angle. Constructive interference occurs when that path difference d sine theta is equal to m times lambda, where m is an integer, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, et cetera. Destructive interference occurs when you have m plus a half lambda is equal to d sine theta. And that's our equation for Young's double slit experiment. 
some notes on that equation. The AP Physics 2 equation sheet only gives you the constructive interference equation m times lambda equals d sine theta. It is your job to know how to modify this equation for destructive interference. You replace the m with m plus 1 half. There's how you go from constructive to destructive. You need to know that. We always will assume that the screen is far away from the slit so that um, we can do this. We'll also sometimes assume the angle is small. If we get to make the small angle approximation, then sine theta is approximately equal to tangent theta, and we'll get some additional simplifications that are shown on the next slide. So here we are, same picture as before. Now we're going to label capital L the distance from the slits over to the screen. And we're going to label y the distance from this central point up to the point on the screen um, which we're uh, referencing right now. And tangent theta then we can see is this distance y over this distance l. So our constructive interference um, was m lambda equals d sine theta. For a super small angle, d sine theta is approximately the same as d tan theta. And tangent theta is y over l. Rearranging this equation, we can see that bright spots, their vertical distance on the screen, y here, that location for a bright spot is equal to m times the wavelength times the distance between the slits in the screen and divided by the slit separation distance. In other words, longer wavelength will mean more distance uh, between successive bright spots. Screen further away will mean more distance between successive right spots. And um, space the slits out more, longer slit separation distance will mean shorter um, distance between right spots. With that derivation, let's look at this some more. Uh, we want to stop and consider, we just did that, but think on your own, which variables impact the location of right spot number M on our screen? And then make sure we know how do we modify this equation for dark spot. It's not m anymore, it's m plus a half. So what's going on here is m refers to which bright spot in our interference pattern we're talking about. The central bright spot is m equals 0. The next bright spot is m equals 1. The next bright spot is m equals 2, and so on. We get an m equals 1 on both sides of 0, we get an m equals 2 on both sides of 0. So our equation is m lambda equals d sine theta. m equals 0 is what we call the zeroth order or central bright spot. m equals 1 is what we call the first order bright spot. m equals 2 is the second order bright spot, etc. And I've got labeled y1 here. That's the y in our previous equation is the distance from center to bright spot 1. And y2 is the distance from center to bright spot 2. Um, and then we can do m equals 3, so on and so on and so on. So m tells you which bright spot we're talking about in our interference pattern. Um, and they're counted um, relative to how far away they are from the central zeroth bright spot. All right, so that concludes our Young's double slit quantitative um, experiment. m lambda equals d sine theta. Get your vertical y's here as well when the uh, angle is small.